passion. Will we ever really understand it? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but one thing I can tell you for sure is that nine times out of ten, it's totally better to embrace fashion and look as incredible as possible rather than just wear whatever crappy look looking crap <laughs> you feel like wearing at the time. <clears throat> and as for that one time out of ten in the scenario I just mentioned, it is reserved specifically and only for supermodel Giselle Bündchen, <laughs> who could probably just poke a few holes in a garbage bag, put it on, and still look really, really great, and you can ask anyone. <laughs> also, Giselle Bündchen had sex with football's Tom Brady. <laughs> Anyway, in simpler times, like in old-timey movies and photographs, for example, people would dress up for dinner, routine traffic court appearances, and even when they flew on airplanes. I was not alive during this time, but it is my understanding that the sex was incredible. Nowadays, people get on airplanes wearing flip-flops, sweatpants, and novelty t-shirts from the popular Ron John Surf Shop. As, as if they are about to take out the goddamn garbage or something. And I can tell you from first-hand experience that most of those people are lucky if they even get to second base during the flight. Or even during a quote-unquote Denver layover, <laughs> despite its sexy implications. <laughs> As for me, recently I boarded a commercial flight from LaGuardia Airport here in town to the Canton Akron Airport <laughs> and had intercourse with half the people in coach. and an entire family and business class without even really trying. Unsatiated, I then boarded them. <laughs> A flight bound for Baltimore, during which I banged four flight attendants, fingered three first class passengers, and got a hand job from one member of the ground crew who wasn't exactly crazy about rules. It should be noted that I did the exact same thing on the return flight. From Baltimore. <laughs> to Akron. 45 minutes later. Albeit with mostly different people. <laughs> the reason for everything I just mentioned is simple. The outfit I had on at the time was incredible. <laughs> I, wore, I wore a three-piece suit with matching tie and handkerchief, and not only did I fucking own Cinnabon <laughs> before boarding the plane in all three cities, but once we got up to 40,000 feet, I was everyone's clear choice for most bangable, fresh-faced, boy-next-door type and coach, and the TSA couldn't say shit about it. I do not attribute any of this to my offbeat good looks. My ability to make light chit-chat with just about anybody or the fact that I smell incredible pretty much all of the time. It's simply because, unlike everyone else on the plane, 
I somehow managed to put out a little effort when it came time to get dressed. My fellow passengers appreciated that, and next thing I knew, I was making sweet, sweet love to a mother of three. <laughs> and her cousin Donna. In the airplane restroom for 20 minutes, even though there was a line and the flight attendant with the mustache was kind of being a dick about it. I realize it is at this point that you're probably thinking to yourselves, but Dave, it's so uncomfortable to get dressed up in fancy outfits all the time. It's much easier and more comfortable to simply walk around in sweatpants or jeggings all day and embrace the fact that we will all be dead soon. And to that I say, pull yourself together, you fucking prick. You suck, you prick. Of course it's more comfortable to dress like shit. But while you're walking around in your coffee and urine stained sweatpants, and free promotional Newport Lights t-shirt. <laughs> the rest of us are forced to look at you and make peace with the fact that there is just one thin layer of breathable cotton between your asshole and the rest of us. And there's nothing anyone can do about it, so we're all screwed, basically. Tonight I stand before you a man of arts and letters. and also with just slightly above average external male genitalia. <laughs> the waistband of my pants is too tight, my tie is choking me, and I have draped my torso in so many layers of tactile and inviting fabric that I'm in grave danger of having a seizure, or at the very least pulling my groin at any moment. The important thing to remember, however, is I did it all for you the ridiculously attractive and hopefully, hopefully open-minded people I see sitting before me here tonight. <laughs> I'm in a great deal of pain, but if it means giving all of you a little eye candy for an hour or two, I'm happy to suffer through it. To my, to, to my left, <laughs> sit my debate team partners who are also looking seriously incredible and making a similar sacrifice just for you. <laughs> to my right sit three selfish bastards, <laughs> two of whom you no doubt remember from the hit TV series Ed, a, sh a, sh a show we still talk about to this day. All of whom are basically telling everyone here tonight to go fuck themselves <laughs> by the manner of the dress and also the suggestion that they intend to continue looking like shit for at least the foreseeable future. Personally, I think all you sexy, sexy people in the audience here tonight deserve better. Also, I would like to have intercourse with you. You know, if, if you want. Thank you.